You know, last uh, Wednesday night, if you were here, um, I preached out of Psalms 21, verses 11, 12, and 13. I'm not going to preach on it again, but I want to read it to you again. Can you all give me, Vicky, Miss Vicky, can you, can you give me Psalm 21, 11, 12, and 13? The Bible says, For they intended evil against thee, they imagined a mischievous device which they are not able to perform. It may look like they are, but they're not. Therefore shalt thou make them turn their back when thou shalt make ready thine arrows upon thy strings against the face of them. And then verse 13 closes out fantastic. Be thou exalted, Lord, in thine own strength. So will we sing and praise thy power. Um, you know, I, I think back to last Wednesday night, what I said. Uh, I, the psalmist and a bunch of psalms, it's, it's like David, like, like, like all of us struggle when evil people or bad people seem to win or, or gain or something or get rich or whatever. And it's just a human nature to bother us. It's just, you know, it's just, you don't like to see, you like to see good people that do things the right way. You like to see them exalted and them blessed. And you know, I'm never jealous when God blesses his children or he supplies something or does something or gives you something. Uh, if you're driving a new vehicle or I got a new job or a new home or whatever, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm always excited for you there. Uh, I'm, I'm not so much for the evil, and I'll admit that. And David struggled with that a lot. If you look in the Psalms, he struggled with it. Uh, he said multiple times, be not envious of evildoers. And there's a bunch of murderers and people out here around our country and our world uh, that are bad, these terrorists and people like that, you know. And uh, but anyway, he said, "Don't don't be envious of them. Don't be, uh, don't 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 want what they've got." You know. And I, you know, I was sitting in a group of people the other day, and we, my nephew, uh, Eddie's grandson, Alan, uh, we were kind of joking one day, Ricky and Megan, and oh, it was Ricky and Megan, me and Rachel. Nathan might have been there. I can't remember who all was there. There were six or seven of us there, and we talked about investments and stocks, you know, and I've never been into much of that, never had money to do it with very much. But uh, he was telling me about this new little thing that uh, might work. I mean, it, it is one of them things that it's similar to Bitcoin that may end up making people, and now billions of dollars. And so... Um, 8,868 shares I bought for $12. Now, you know that's a high. You can tell by the cost, right? You're smiling. You can tell by the cost that's a high-quality stock I bought, right? It's point oh 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 two six, you know? And uh, But I say, you know, it's $12, so we'll see. If it comes, it comes out one day, I'll be rich. But we got the talking about, uh, Megan spoke up, and so I said, what would y'all do if you won if you all of a sudden had millions of dollars and and I, I'm not being critical of them at all. I mean they're young and they told some things they wanted and they, they asked me and got back around to me and they said, What would you do? And you know, my answer now is totally different than it would have been thirty years ago. Thirty years ago I'd have probably said, Well, I'd like to have a brand new pickup truck and maybe a brand new home and you know, this or that. Brother Bob I sat there and thought about it, and I said, not because he's sitting here tonight. I said, I think I'd buy Jim Hellams, a brand new Mac Daddy, right off the platform Bobcat, with all the toys on it. Amen. I mean, I'm, I'm yeah, and, and you're, some of y'all might be looking at me. You may, you may, you know, you may not be taking me serious. That's fine, but, but I, I thought that. I, I brother Jim, you know. I mean, bless, bless his heart, he has to make it do, and he, he, 
working on it and fixing it and using it and all the time. I said, I think I'd do that. I said, I think the first thing I'd do if I became a millionaire, I'd buy Brother Jim a Mac Daddy uh, Cadillac, Caterpillar, whatever Bobcats they are, you know. And then I thought of some other people. I really did. Uh, I mean, I'm not bragging, but I, I thought of I thought of James McDaniel and his mom and them over there, what they have to live in. I said, you know, I'd probably buy them a, a maybe a double wide trailer or something. And I'm not saying that to brag on me, but but we talked about it a while, and they said, well, what would you want for yourself? I mean, you know, your family is the most important thing you want and your health, if you can have it, you know. I said, I really don't know. I mean, I reckon if, if big red F-150, brand new, uh, I'd drive around for get it free, you know, uh, for a while at least. But as I get older, church, I just really, as I get older, I, I'm not as envious of rich people or people with real fancy and ain't nothing wrong with having money nothing wrong with having nice things I'm not I'm not preaching against that but I just thought of how our world is so whacked up right now they're just so materialistic everything is everything is about you know uh, I, I yesterday was my grandson's Dylan's 16th birthday and I called him and, and wished him happy birthday I've already bought his gift he called me a month ago. He said, Papa, for my Christmas and birthday, would you buy me this? And I did. And so I reminded him yesterday, you done been bought a gift by Papa. But you know what? I hung the phone and I thought, of, I mean, he works with Brother Todd some now still, right, Brother Todd? And he's a fine young boy. He really is with a good heart. And you know, that means more to me than a, I don't know. A fancy truck or a fancy house or I, 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 I just re really I've got a few things I want to do me and Mike want to we want to go to where's that place no Venice Louisiana we want to go we want to go to Venice Louisiana and uh, redfish down there you know down there on the bayou and eat some seafood while we're there but I'm just thinking about the Bible talks about being envious of evildoers and envious of the rich and and the powerful and and you know what we have as Christians, what we have is just a minute ago I bowed my head and I said, dear Heavenly Father, do you realize the privilege we have just to have our Heavenly Father to talk to every day? And it costs you nothing. And he's there any time. And he listens every time. And he speaks to your heart when you listen to him. Isn't that a blessing? I mean, just a simple, basic thing. And, and, and I've got this. I was thinking the day, I said, Lord, you know, I, I've got a perfect word of God. A perfect word of God. See, I don't believe there are any errors in here. I, you start correcting this Bible... You're going to cross the line with me. We're going to fight. I can promise you. There are no errors in here. There are no contradictions in here. There are no mistakes in here. Okay? What the world has out there is it's a mirage. It's a mirage. It looks good, and it shines, but it's fake. And what we have in Jesus and what we have in God is 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 something that we'll have eternity to worship him and to adore him and to fellowship with him and he'll give us good things he'll the bible says he'll give you the desires of your heart and if you give him what's yours and you walk with god and you seek his will he's going to give you things and he's going to bless you and he's going to do things for you but but i just I, you know I, I, I thought about, I, I, I thought about, I mean, honestly, the election and some other things going on. And I said, Lord, you know, this just ain't working out the way I want it to. But you know what? God didn't wake up with Maalox this morning. 
Do you know that? You know, God didn't wake up this morning and say, Hey, angel, go get me a Pepto Bisball. I've done let my plate run, let something happen down there. No, God knows everything. God knows what He's doing. I've used this illustration so many times, I know, but it just, it, it, it just proves this point so good to me. Uh, Bobby Fischer was, quote unquote, the greatest chess player of all time. Uh, he beat the Russians that nobody could beat. He beat the Italians. Uh, he beat multiple people at one time. Uh, and I remember one time he said he sat down with a young guy. And he didn't tell this. The young guy did. He said he sat down across from Bobby Fisher. Bobby Fisher said, okay, son, it's your move. Well, he went to get his pawn and move it. And he said, by the way, that's the last time it'll be your move. The boy kind of looked at him and said, what do you mean, Mr. Fisher? He said, I will dictate from now on every move you make. When I get my hands on my chess set, I am sovereign over the chess board. You won't, he said, you won't make a move I hadn't seen. You won't do something that I don't know what to do next. That's how God is. God has not woke up discouraged. God does not get discouraged. God is not late. God does not make mistakes. He does none of that. And when I was in college, I memorized a poem. Uh, my father's way, well, I can't remember, but one stanza of it. I, I used to have the whole thing memorized. What's that? You should give it. You, get, you hear that? My father's way may twist and turn, my heart may throb and ache, but in my soul or my heart, I know he's never made one mistake. Never. I mean, you know, I was thinking about the day at the store, I'll admit this, I was thinking about, thinking about last November, about this time when, matter of fact, we went down to Florida last year, and uh, Josh and Eddie and us went down there, and it's right before he died, I went to the Florida Georgia game. I didn't go to the game, they did. And uh, I don't know, I was thinking about him today. And you know, uh, some of you don't understand unless you've been there, and very few people have been there. Uh, you think you do and you shake your heads, but Miss Renice, you know, you've been there twice, right? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. See, people think, well, that's 11 months ago. I mean, it's over and you're, you're okay now, right? Is that right, Miss Renice? No. I'm not trying to make her sad. I'm just trying to show you something. That real pain always hurts. Always hurts. But God is always there. And whatever obstacle comes and whatever tragedy takes place, keep this in mind that God is pulling the string. Ultimately, you say, well, I don't know, preacher. Why does bad things happen to good people? I like what one preacher said one time, Brother Mike. He said, why does, I got a better question than that. Why does good things happen to bad people like me? He said, why is I the sinner I am? God loved me so much his son died for me. So we don't know. We don't know why people have to lose their children or this or that or whatever or what whatever tragedy comes you know I mean I mean Mike's worried about his mom with COVID down in down in Savannah you know and and some of y'all been there with your mom and dads and you know the feeling and it, it's a bad feeling I know that but don't we always have hope in God is that not what faith is what is the difference in us and the world they don't have hope. They're hopeless. They don't, they don't see light at the end of the tunnel. We do. As one preacher said, we've read the back of the book and we know how it ends. I mean, I was just thinking about me and Jess yesterday. I was just sitting here thinking, you know, I was thinking about the day, you know, I uh, just sitting there at the reclining chair, just sitting thinking about how the Lord put... Me and, Brother, me and Brother Fisher together. 
And then through Brother Fisher, he put me and Tony Shirley together. And then through Tony Shirley, he put me and Brother Jesse together. Are you following me? Because God does all things well. See, the Bible says in Psalms uh, 31, Psalm 31, this verse has always meant a lot to me all of my life. Psalms 31, we're going to read verse 14, 15, and 16. But I trusted in thee, O Lord. I said, Thou art my God. What's this next statement? Scott, my times are in thy hand, he said. The psalmist said, My times. Now look that word times up and see what it's talking about. It's talking about your life. Your life is in His hand. God has promised to take care of you. God has promised to protect you. God has promised to feed you and clothe you and watch over you. God has. God's done that. Our times, our lives are in His hand. Then it goes on to say, verse 15, Deliver me from the hand of mine enemies and from them that persecute me. Make thy face to shine upon thy servant. Save me for thy mercy's sake. See, we don't deserve what we get. You know, we, we, we talk about, and, and, and you know, I mean, things, things are going to change. If, if the election holds, and there'll be things changing. We won't like some of them. And, and, uh, and, uh, and I, what I'm worried about in America, and I have been for years, is we've been leaving America that we knew for a long time. This didn't just happen yesterday. I mean, I mean I, I'm 65 years old, so I've been around enough to remember the America of yesterday. And see, we've been putting God on the shelf for 30, 40 years now. We took him out of public schools. We took him out of our government buildings. We took him out of the public. We took him out of our state universities, our, our schools. So I'll be honest with you, I, I hope I'm wrong, but sometimes I was thinking the day, maybe God just says, okay, you don't want me anymore? You don't want me to bless your country the way I've blessed it anymore, maybe? You, you want to see how some other countries live or whatever? I talked about our missionaries a while ago. I think about Brother Jesse's friend, Brother Manuel Gomez. I mean, down there, y'all don't realize he's not in just, he's not just in a mission field preaching the gospel. He's in a terribly dangerous area. I mean, the drug cartel, they've had multiple beheadings multiple hangings of bodies in the very village that he's in. When he goes to town sometimes, he doesn't know he may ever come out of there alive. But God takes care of him, and he blesses him, and he protects him and watches over him. Because, see, church, our lives are in his hand. And he never makes a mistake. I make a mistake. You make a mistake. We all make mistakes. But God never does. He's never messed up. Brother Jesse just preached one of my favorite books of the Bible, the book of Ruth. And the reason I like it is, is, is not just for the stuff in it, but the history leading up to it. Where did the Moabites come from? Lot and his daughter had a sensual relationship and had a boy. And they called him Moab. So here she is in Moab, a Moabitess, and the grace of God comes by. She, the Bible says she happed, remember that? She happed to be in that field. No, God happed her in that field. God said, you go in that field, and Boaz will be there. See, 
the devil, he intends evil for us. The devil hates us. Do you realize that? He really hates us. He really is against everything. He wants to throw a wrench in everything you do. He, he wants to get, if he can't get your soul, he wants to get your life. If he can't get your soul to your life, he wants to get your children's soul. If he can't get your soul to your life, your children's soul, he wants to get your children's lives. Jesus said in John 10, he just comes to kill and destroy. That's what he comes for. But God is bigger than him. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You, you know, and I know I've said this so many times through the years, but I'll say it again. You be reading the Gospels, you know, and there'd be miracles and stuff going on, you know. And you run into demons multiple times. I love how scared the demons are of him. Are you following me? I said, I love how scared of the demons, he, they, they, uh, of him the demons are. They'll start saying, Oh, thou son of David. Oh, thou son of David, have mercy on us. One time they said to him, You've come to torment us before our time. See, they know, listen, church, they know they're doomed. They know hell's made for them. Do you realize that? Why would they have said to Jesus, well, you've come to torment us before our time? Because he has authority over them. So whatever we go through in life and whatever we do in life, we're in his hand. Our life, our times are in his hand. You know, you know, when Jesse called me, Brother Jesse, when he called me, uh, I, you know, I, I, I mean, I've preached 40 years. My Lord, I've got 500, 5,000 sermons in my mind. So it normally is not a problem to come up with a sermon. Uh, an illustration, an illustration I thought of today was, you know, you, you hear me talk a lot about my papa, uh, my mama's daddy, who I lived with uh, from the time I was one to the time I was six and then every time I could I went back to Jessup and I lived with them uh, on my phone if you see on my phone my screensaver is a picture of the pond that I call my papa's pond had a little wooden dock on it and I'd swim a while brother Bob I'd swim a while then I'd get some earthworms and catch some brim a while and then I'd swim another time. But, but he, he, he was so good to me. But we'd go out at night and say, you all probably have no idea what this is. Have you ever heard of set hooks, bush hooks? You know what that is? I know you know, Mike. That's not fair. Anybody else know? Brother Bob? Yeah. Okay. You, 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 you go to a river or a creek, and you know, on the side of it, you got bushes and you got things. And what he would do is he'd take a, about a, I don't know, about a four foot little white, you know, regular, a uh, little like tobacco line might have been, and he'd put a hook on it, and he'd put a piece of cut bait on there. He'd catch a brim, and he'd chop the brim up, and he'd hook him, you know, and he'd drop that back down in the river. But he'd do that to about 40 bushes. We'd go up and down the river, you back, putting them set hooks in there. Well, when you walk down beside that river, he'd go back at night because what his favorite fish was a catfish. He really wanted to catch. He loved, I mean, he liked fish, period, but he loved to catch and eat catfish. And so we'd go at dark because they'd, you know, catfish bite at night better because they're 80, 90% blind. So we'd walk down the side of that thing, and the danger was you're walking right beside the river, and the sand, you know, and the stuff is not real solid and you can easily slip down into it. And Pop would take me in his hand, Brother Jim. He'd take a lantern in that hand. He'd throw around his neck a fish string, you know, with fish or whatever. And he'd take my hand and he'd lead me down that river. 
And he'd always push me back when he got to the bush and he'd pull the bush up. Pull the... And I thought today, you know how safe I felt as a little boy when my papa's hand had me? You know how safe I felt? Really? I mean, my papa's hand had my little hand. Yeah, I just felt safe. Well, do you realize we're in God's hand? And, and more sure, more sure that my papa would take care of me. And I, you know, you know Ed. No, you didn't know Ed. That's why I got whipped so much. I'd break away sometime. He'd let my hand go. And I'd be convinced I could run under by myself. And I, I more than once, ploosh, right down in the creek, son, you know. But, but, but with God, you're never going to do that. See, you're never going to get out of his hand. You're never going to get out of His protection. You're never going to get away from His sovereignty. So whatever comes in your life or my life, He's going to be there. He's going to take care of me. Maranisa, I mentioned the pain of losing your sons, but He has helped you, hasn't He? The Lord has helped you. Yeah. You hear that? Yeah. And He'll help you. Whatever you're going through, whatever it is, He'll help you. My times are in thy hand. God, you know what's going on. You didn't wake up today. See, my Lord, look what's happening in America. Look what's happening in Europe. Or look what's happening in Georgia. He, he didn't do that. He knows. He knows ahead of time. He, know, he knew before the foundation of the world, the Bible says. Before the foundation of the world, He knows. Everything. You say, wait, well, everything. Uh, he, he knows, He knows what's going to happen to you tw tw six weeks from now. He knows what's going to happen to you tomorrow. He knows what's going to happen five years from now. God knows everything. Therefore, when things happen or go against us, you've got to trust Him. Sometimes that's all you can do. That's all you can do sometimes. You don't have any other options. I mean, sometimes, you know, you got friends and you got a wife, you got a husband, you, you got sons and daughters, and sometimes they can console you, sometimes they can sympathize with you, sometimes they can give you a hug, help you, but sometimes they can't. I mean, I've watched the look in my brother's eyes a few times, and I've watched him walk off with a black look. And you know what? I didn't have no answer for him. And I knew I didn't. I don't. But you know who does? The Holy Ghost of God does. He can speak comfort. He can speak peace. He can speak joy to you. Amen? Well, let's have a word of prayer. Before we go, Sunday... Um, there has been a change. I know we got on the sign by the Tony Shirley's coming, but he's not coming. He's coming next month. He's coming in December, the Lord willing. But uh, he's not going to be here Sunday. We are going to have the day for Brother Jesse and Mr. Kelly, and we're going to um, have the dinner we talked about, Brother Todd. We talked about fair food, which is, I mean, I mean, they told us what to bring Sunday and all, right? And we know uh, you have your Blackstone here grilling and, Okay, I'll try to remember my Johnsonville cooker and uh, cook a few bratwurst in it or whatever. But that's Sunday, and, and I hope you're going to be here. Uh, we'll start Sunday school at 10 o'clock, and we'll have church at 11 o'clock, like regular. And we're going to have some videos for him, and uh, we're going we're to give him a, a love offering, a gift, and we're going to do... I uh, hope you're bringing him some gifts. Also... Uh, I pick, I'm going to pick Jesse something up uh, tomorrow or Friday, or the Lord willing. And, uh, but that's Sunday, November the 8th. That's 11 o'clock church time, 10 o'clock Sunday school time, okay? 
And uh, I want to remind you about that. Try to come to Sunday school. We, we, have, a, we have a good time in Sunday school. Um, I'm teaching Sunday school. If I don't, Brother Greg Teasley teaches Sunday school. Uh, you know, one of us, one of us will teach it uh, each Sunday, so plan on being there. Anybody got anything special to say before we go? Any other request or praise or anything? Anybody? Everybody okay then? Okay, well, let's stand for a word of prayer.